Joining me now is filmmaker Army Horowitz. Now, Army, as the uh, lefties continue to shout free Palestine whilst Israel defends itself against Hamas, the question is, where do Arab Israelis stand on this conflict? Uh, you went out there and you asked. Let's have a look. When the Hamas attack happened on October 7th, did your heart break just like any other Jew, any other Jewish Israeli? Better. Israelis, are they looking at you differently now because of the attacks? No, 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 I mean, it's uh, good to hear from Arabs who live in Israel, which we are told is an apartheid state. Yeah, you know, it's amazing the narrative that goes around the world. Um, look, any, any way they can demonize Israel, they'll, they'll, they'll try to take advantage and they'll lie and they'll obfuscate if they can. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, look, uh, if you go and you speak with Arab Israelis, and I've spent... This is maybe the third short doc I've done with Arab Israelis. I've gotten to know them across the country. And look, do they think things are perfect in Israel for them? Of course not. But if you ask them, they say to me, well, where is it perfect for any minority anywhere in the world? Um, they are very clear. They would much rather live in Israel than any other Arab state. They, more than any other person, understands what they have and what they would lose if they were part of Egypt or Iraq or, or a Palestinian state. Um, in terms of economics, they have more money, they have more income than any other Arab, in fact, by multiples anywhere else in the world. They have more freedom, they get to vote. None of these things are available anywhere else in the Arab world, they understand that. And, you know, when I talk to them about how the world looks at Israel in terms of its prosecution of the war in Gaza, I specifically ask them, because they know the IDF and the Israelis best. They know, the Arab Israeli knows these, the Jewish Israelis better than anyone else in the Arab world. When I said, do you think that Israel is trying to target civilians? They laughed at me. They said, you don't understand. If you think that, you don't understand how Israel does business. Of course not. They feel terrible that their co-religionists are dying in Gaza for sure, but they understand this is part of a larger war. Israel's prosecuting a war against Hamas. They fully understand that. And ultimately, when I asked them, who do you stand with? Do you stand with the Gazans or do you stand with Israel? Most of them did not hesitate and said, we stand with Israel. Now, independent uh, presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has finally revealed his running mate. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about this one, but it's Nicola Shanahan, a 38-year-old entrepreneur from Oakland, a Democrat donor who's a... Track record is not going to appeal to many Republicans, I would argue, Army. Uh, Kennedy is 70 and he said he wanted someone who was younger, who could um, speak to the millennials and Gen Z generations. Uh, she's got a strong connection in the tech industry. But I've got to say, I think the Trump camp would be much happier with this pick than the Biden camp. Yeah, you know, look, uh, RFK, the, the, the argument is that he helps, uh, his running helps Trump more than Biden. It's not exactly true. If you look at the real battleground states, I mean, there's really three major battleground states. Um, if you look at Michigan, uh, he he helps Trump in Michigan. He hurts him in Pennsylvania. So it's 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 kind of sticks of this half dozen the other, uh, ultimately, when it comes down to the battleground states. But I just find the whole, look, I find this whole thing ironic. Um, the Democratic Party, right, the, the, the people trying to preserve democracy, right, the fighters for democracy have been trying to kick RFK off the ballot, just like they're trying to kick uh, Donald Trump off the ballot, because in their mind, well, once we get rid of all of our opponents, then we can preserve democracy. <laughs> I forgot who we talking about, Biden or Putin at this point? Uh, but that's been the M.O. for the Democrats uh, for this entire time, that they're going to use lawfare to try to win this election. Um, as opposed to trying to win it in the ballot box. Now, MSNBC has sacked Ronna McDaniel from her role as a contributor just days after she was hired. It comes after an almighty meltdown from their online talent. Uh, 
including their chief disinformation peddlers, the propagandists like Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid and uh, Nicole Wallace. Uh, but this was across the board, this tantrum. And I don't know why they think they've got this massive victory. I mean, McDaniel was pretty much sacked as the RNC chair. She, she's not a favourite amongst the, the Republicans. Uh, so it, I don't think it's the scalp that they think it is. Yeah, look, I, I'm not the biggest uh, fan of, of Ronnie McDaniel, right? I mean, she's been she was a terrible head of the RNC. She lost essentially every election other than 2016, and that wasn't her. That was Trump who really won yep. it. Um, uh, have, you know, she was still obsequious uh, to President Trump, but she dropped the name Romney. Uh, not her biggest fan, but I love these moments, Rita. They are so clarifying on where the where the media stands on these issues, right? Uh, look, you're, the MSNBC employs somebody who's responsible for a modern-day Jewish pogrom, which led to the death of a Jew. The same guy, Al Sharpton, yep. was, was responsible for a riot in New York that burned down buildings. This guy has his own show on MSNBC, Rita, okay? Jen Psaki was the literal mouthpiece for the Obama administration. Guess what? She has her own show. There are many tons of people mm -hmm. from the current administration that are employed by MSNBC, but God forbid they have somebody on their air who actually supports Trump. That's the irony of this thing, but I love it because it really reveals the truth of MSNBC and the mainstream media. I'm glad we have these moments so we can expose them for what they are. Now, the White House has expressed disappointment after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cancelled a visit by a top Israeli delegation to Washington after the US chose to abstain on a United Nations Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, relations between the two countries, uh, Army, they're not what they once were. No, and look, I think we I think you know I'm a, I'm a truth teller. Um, wherever that net, wherever the truth takes me, the data takes me is kind of the position I will take. Look, Joe Biden, well, certainly as compared to President Obama, who was a terrible president when it came to Israel, who in the waning days of administration um, basically threw Israel under the bus and then backed the bus up over Israel. Compared to that, I, you know, Joe Biden, when it came to the first few months of the war that Israel was waging against Hamas butchers, was pretty good, right? In deed and in word, he was supportive of Israel. And I have no real complaints uh, when it came to how he defended Israel for those first few months. But man, how things have turned. Uh, would you want to be Netanyahu coming to uh, to visit the Joe Biden administration after they, they they abstain on a resolution that was so disgusting that called for a unilateral ceasefire without the hostages, condemned Israel, did not condemn Hamas, but they couldn't vote against it? They couldn't veto that. They couldn't stomach a veto of that resolution. It was disgusting. You know you're wrong when you're on the same side as. Hamas, Iran, and Hezbollah were cheering the U.S. decision to abstain. You know you made a wrong decision, a wrong turn somewhere, when those guys are your cheering squad, right? Uh, look, this has been a major issue, and in fact, what's happened is Hamas understood that now they're, they are they, they have a, an, a, a new ally. You know, obviously, I don't, I don't think that Biden's looking to be their ally, but they're playing the Biden administration. The, the Hamas has now gone back to their original negotiating position because of this be, this lack of a veto, because of this abstention. They're now saying that we want to keep control of Gaza, we want a complete withdrawal of Israeli forces, and we want all Hamas terrorists released in exchange for the hostages. They have gone back to their original position. We have lost ground because of the weakness of this administration and its now unwillingness to support Israel, and all for what? Is Biden really anti-Israel? No. What he's doing it for crass political purposes, for a few votes in Michigan, he had decided to throw his ally and stomp on him. Amir Horowitz, uh, thank you for your time this evening. Always a pleasure.